Welcome to yet another episode of Channel 9 Going Native. Uh, my name is Steve Carroll. I'm the dev manager for Visual C++. I'm Gabriel Dostres, uh, developer on the C++ team. And we're coming straight from the CPP conference here in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, we've been interviewing speakers and other folks all day. Uh, we're very excited about this conference. Uh, there's about 680 people, I think, yep. here today, something yes. like that, uh, all here to just talk about C++. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we have a special short episode uh, focused on CppCon because we had a very special guest. Do you want to tell yeah. us about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So today we got Bjarne Strostrup. Who? who? Bjarne Strostrup. Oh. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> the U is the V. <laughs> Um, so Bjarne gave a uh, keynote, a historic keynote uh, about you know, modern C++, how you should write C++, good C++. Uh, the, the rules are, you know, comes up with uh, a set of guidelines, abstracts, and very concrete. Uh, at the same time, uh, tool enforced. And the, uh, the rules are very common sense, things that you should be doing you know, all along. But you know, when you go on the internet, you get weird stuff. Now here you hear from Bjarne telling you why and how you should be writing your code, why it is good for you. And this is a, a, a cross-organization you know, effort. It gets uh, people from CERN, Morgan Stanley, of course, Bjarne, Microsoft, but we actually expect more folks to, to join. And the tools, we're going to get uh, Microsoft uh, tooling, but also Clung and, and hopefully a GCC. So, um, you know, without burning more cycles, I'll let you know here from the other directly. Good morning, everybody. Uh, here we are in Bellevue at CppCon 2015. We have Bjarne who uh, gave us a historic uh, keynote this morning. Bjarne, what was it about? Well, we're trying to address the, the question that a lot of people are trying, is trying to address. What is modern C++ and how do we write code better than we used to? And we have all of these old rules of thumb and old tool chains and such. But when you look at it today, we, we're much better off. I mean, C++ 11 is so much better than C++ 98, 14 is better than 11, and we're coming up on 17 soon. So how do we define a language that we can write in? And so we're trying to develop a set of coding guidelines, what you call the C++ core coding guidelines, that will define how you write modern code. How do you want your code to look like in five, ten years? Uh, not, not backwards looking, not, not C or C with classes or pseudo Java, uh, but modern uh, C++, what does it mean? And we want some, um, we want a set of guidelines that guides people to write uh, C++ as it will become and help people move towards that. And we want a, um, we, we want basically C++ on steroids as, as opposed to some neutered uh, Java-like <laughs> version. Uh, that we really want to maintain the zero overhead principle while reducing amount of code, while increasing the range of the code. And the way we do it is we have a set of rules that are based on a, um, on a little library, tiny little library called the Guideline Support Library, the GSL, and static analysis to enhance the type system and allow us to have simpler code at runtime because we check it before we run. And, and that combination is, is really powerful. So we take C++, we add the uh, guideline support library, we add some static checking from a, a fairly simple uh, checker conceptually, uh, so it'll run fast. And then we subset. After having superset it, we subset and take away all the crud we don't need. And we get a simpler, faster, more general language. That's what we're up to. And so the idea is actually to get a lot of people, not just language specialists, but potentially the whole C++ community, four point some million programmers, billions of lines of code, moved along over the next two, five, ten years. But starting now, we're very, very impatient. <laughs> we started this stuff in March or April, and we are sh starting to ship now. 
and we hope to be in business next month. But being in business doesn't mean how to make a, a, a pile of, of money. It means <laughs> having the whole community use it. We use the um, MIT license. We want contributions from everybody, and we want uh, to grow fast. And um, we, we, we really hope to make a difference so that uh, with, with C++ plus the guidelines, we will be uh, really enhancing, uh, enhancing people's productivity by eliminating whole classes of bugs. We are going to eliminate all resource leaks, uh, all type violations, all dangling pointers, for starters. And, and <laughs> just, just in the morning, just in the afternoon. Now, we'll that's <laughs> right. And in the afternoon, we'll go after common sources of logic bugs, common sources of maintenance problems and such. So we're trying to be quite comprehensive. And the core guidelines can't be comprehensive enough. We expect lots of uh, organizations, lots of communities, to build their own extensions. It's like fork what we what we're putting up there. Is that the right way to think about it? Or I don't think it's a, a fork. It's an addition. Got probably it. An, uh, probably like the subset of superset, they will add some I libraries see. that they feel and they may have to subset the the core guidelines. I mean, you don't expect people writing. Um, sort of large scale applications to work with the same rule as people that do flight control software. Yes. I mean, yeah. you don't want to write under the strictest rules all the time. And so you, you would expect the graphics guys have something, the financial guys to have something, the, uh, uh, the, the, the computational guys to have something. But we're focusing now at the core. I see. The, the stuff that's and broadly fun. Expect uh, people to extend and, and subtract again. And it comes with a philosophy. We have high-level rules that give sort of the philosophy, the uh, uh, conceptual framework, and we have the low-level rules that we can actually simply, easily uh, check. And the idea is nobody understands all of those rules and wants to know all of those rules, but the tool will dump you right into the document at the point when we're saying, this is the rule that you violated, this is the reason this rule is here, Here's an example of uh, why this is a good idea, and then sometimes more, some more, something more. Right. So, what do we expect from these checkers that check the rules? What, what ideally, what would you like to see? Um, I would like to see nothing. <laughs> After a while, <laughs> it just compiles, and you have gotten used to the rules, and you write code just like you do today. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's quiet. And then you make a type error, and the compiler tells you what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. Similarly here, uh, you write your code, and when you write some new code, you sort of get into the habit of obeying the guidelines. And when you fail, it'll drop you straight in at the rule you violated. So you expect this to be either part of the development process before you're checking the, uh, the code yes. or what? Yes. Before sending uh, for review? Or? Yes, yes, and yes. What I expect is that to start out with, people will use the guideline support library to eliminate some of the, the more common bugs. Mm -hmm. Then they'll run the checker to eliminate more. And I would expect it to be part of the tool chain. That is, you, you, you run it basically before you, either before or after you run the compiler. And I keep getting the question, I mean, shouldn't be be part of the compiler? And the answer is yes and no. Um, I don't really want it to be part of the compiler because I don't want to wait till all of my compilers have been updated. <laughs> I, I want to be able to run this checker uh, on top of an antique Microsoft or an antique GCC compiler. I mean, just because people can't I update see. their code to right. a new model doesn't mean you can't get the new benefits. And, and secondly, some of the rules aren't suitable for compilers. Some are, but compilers shouldn't have false positives. And compilers shouldn't reject legal code. That's a tool problem. But some of them will be integrated. There'll probably be, I, I hope to see a switch, say the guideline switch on, say, GCC or Clang or Microsoft and it'll just be part of the compilation. Mm -hmm. But for now, and probably close to forever, there should be external tools that does the things that a um, compiler can't do well. Maybe somebody invents tools that check rules that we can't do now because they're a bit philosophical, 
the simple ones you can check, the low level ones you can check, but the more general ones, maybe there's a rule that takes uh, whole program analysis, uh, which we definitely can't enforce, yes. and we shouldn't try, but a, a tool provided by somebody um, could do that. And we do hope that there'll be lots of tools. I talk about tools, not tool. It is not a tool, it's not a compiler. It is a set of tools provided by the community, some open source, some uh, uh, commercial and such, and that's the way it's supposed to be. So Lots if somebody wants tools. to get started with the, with, the rule, with the new guidelines and the support library, how should they go about that? Let's see. Um, today, you can go to GitHub and find the tools. And today, you can go to GitHub and find the first implementation of the support library. So I would read a little bit of the tools. Don't read everything. It's okay. Just too much the guidelines. The guidelines. Yes, Don't sir. read everything. And, and, and start seeing if you can fit the uh, GSL into your, uh, your tools. You can do it today and use it to catch uh, dereferencing null pointers, to catch, um, what's it called, uh, range errors. I mean, the, the, doing that is a little bit of uh, checking. You probably already do it today, but in principle, it's, it, it has a cost associated. But, but you can try it, it cleans up your code. You can start defining your templates with comments that specify which co uh, concepts you're using. And when we get concepts, uh, or if you use the, the GCC implementation of concepts today, you can get it checked. Until then, it's comments. Got it. And so you can start today. Then next month, there should be something from my friends at Microsoft. And the um, month after, uh, we hope that there will be something available um, with uh, Clang and GCC. It's Great. written in, in ISO C++, so it should work on other platforms, uh, Linux, Macs, uh, and such. It, it's definitely not going to be narrow. It's definitely not, if, if, if this is no one company, no one individual can do this. This is a big, big deal. It's for the community. But we're after something that is a massive improvement in the C++ community. Probably the biggest thing uh, since C++ 11 and probably bigger. Great. But we rely on C++ 11. Without it, we couldn't uh, do it. And we're going to 14. That'll be even better and I have high hope for 17. <laughs> so uh, we usually hear about modern C++. What would you characterize as modern C++, especially for the new uh, commerce programmers who are you know, getting job, daytime you know, job, used to write C++, and you hear modern C++, so is there any C++ that you should be looking at? No. Um, the problem is, I mean, the problem we're trying to address is very simple, that people are writing C or C-like stuff, they're writing C with classes, they're writing uh, Java-style uh, thing as they thought it was cool in the late 80s. <laughs> and they think they're writing good C++. So we started out with the question, what is good C++? What is modern C++? What, what, what should our code look like in five to 10 years? What should it look like now? And people try all kinds of weird things also. The people are not stuck in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, write code that they think would be right for now, but they're isolated, they're not helped. They try all the new features, they get lost in language complexities. I mean, look at the ISO document. It's, 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 it's probably good for compiler writers, but it's certainly <laughs> un unfit for ordinary people. And it's not written for ordinary people. No. There's far too many rules, far too much backwards compatibility. So we have to somehow say, out there in the future is a good place and we should go there. And so let's start. Where do we start? Get rid of all the type errors. Get rid of all the resource leaks. Get rid of all the range errors. Uh, get rid of all the dangling pointers. That's a good start. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> OK, great. So we'll put uh, a link to the keynote talk where you can get more details on good. this in the, uh, the description for, yep. the, for this. And we'll put links to the ISO CPP coding guidelines and the guideline support library. Yeah. And people can jump right in. And there will, of course, be talks more about this. Herb Sauter has been part of this. And he has a talk 
Uh, Neil McIntosh has two talks. He works on the standard um, static analysis the, the static analysis tool and the GS yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, the guidelines yeah. uh, library. And uh, Gabby uh, has some talks about what he's been doing in the standards committee because we are trying to work very closely with the direction we have in the standards committee. So we want modules. I want my compilations to run fast. So Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and I want isolation from all of those nasty macros, and I'm going to get it. <laughs> or well, one of the rules is don't use macros. <laughs> I, uh, I for, fully for, for, it. for configuration, yes. yeah, you probably have to, but that's about it. Uh, we, we're going after known problems, known bugs, and macros are high on the list of that. And then you have a talk, what is the other contracts? contracts. We're, contracts. we're, we're yeah. using contracts yeah. in the yeah. guidelines. Yeah. So thank you a lot, Yanni, for leading this event. I know it is historic. I can't wait to see this propagate to the rest of the world. Neither can I. All right. So that's our episode for this month. Uh, we, like last year at CPPCon, all of the talks are being in, uh, recorded, and we are actually interviewing many of the speakers. So next month's episode will be an omnibus of those speaker interviews, uh, which would give you uh, some information about those talks so you can decide which ones you want to watch. Uh, that should be coming out later in October. And in the meantime, you can go and watch all the CPPCon 2014 videos that you missed out from last year. And we will be looking for your feedback. Thanks.